Before this video starts, I do want to clarify, you will need to download quite a bit of software. Fmodel will be one of these softwares, so if you haven't set that up yet, I'd advise you watch my previous video. I go over setting that up for this game, which will be in the description and also in the top right of your screen right now. Finally, I will say that you need some level of knowledge about Blender, as the more comfortable you are using it, the faster this process will go. The software you will be needing in this video is as follows. Fmodel, Noasis, Blender 3.6 LTS, Select Face by Vertex Color Add-on for Blender, Unreal Engine 5.1, and Unreal Packer. They will all be in the description, along with a few miscellaneous things that you may or may not need later into the video. I'm not going to waste any time, so we're going to do our first thing, we're going to export the outline model of our character of our choice. I'm assuming that you probably already had your textures made for your model, meaning that you already know who this is going to be. You will also be needing to export the default model, as we'll be using this later. After this, we're going to move to Blender. If you did export the model as Actor X, make sure you do have that Blender add-on installed. That is in the description. Once in Blender, import your default model not the outline model. Move this off to the side for now, as we'll be importing a new model shortly. Now that we have this model in Blender, we're gonna move to a new program. That being, Noasis. Man, what the fuck? Man, I don't wanna talk to your bitch! Noasis is in the description, and trust me, I didn't send you back to the past or to a weird website. Although, I do admit, it is a bit weird myself. Noasis is gonna look close to UE model or UE viewer's uh, layout, all you need to know is that you're going to be finding your exported outline model from Fmodel in Noasis. When you get to the export screen, you have to make one additional adjustment. Well, I guess other than changing the model's output to FBX. Copy this text right here. It will be in the description, so you can just copy it there. Put this into the advanced options line right here. After that, you can finally export the model, click OK, and be happy that you won't be opening this program again. Once you're back in Blender, you're going to need to import your Noasis model, which is a FBX, so make sure you click that option at the top. Once this gets imported, be prepared. You're going to be in Blender for a while, so get music, snacks, and lots of water ready. Or... that's what I was planning to say. You see, it's a few days later now since I decided to make this video, and in that span of time, I found an even faster way of doing this. And when I say faster, I mean extremely fast. See, a day or two into the editing process, I decided to go into the server. I was originally trying to figure out how another add-on worked, called Vertex Color Master. I thought if there was going to be a faster method, it would probably be with this add-on. Surprisingly though, I got a response, and that was from the GOAT, Grim. See, Grim came to the server, and he gave me an amazing idea. What if we could somehow export the vertex paint as an image, edit that in Photoshop, and then rebake it onto the model? See, I don't know why I didn't think of this, but this is kind of genius. I immediately started experimenting, and not even 30 minutes later, I figured out the perfect method to get this done. See, the old method that I was about to teach you was basically hand painting the model yourself, whilst using an add-on to help speed up the process. Extremely boring and slow to put it lightly. This method though, this would skip all of that. Okay, enough. How do we actually do this? To start this method off, we're going to need to go back into Blender and change a few things. First things first is going to the Render Properties tab. We're going to need to change the render engine from EV to Cycles. We need to do this to access the option to bake vertex paint onto the model. This option will not appear if you are on EV. After this is the optional step of scrolling down and changing the color management setting from filmic to standard. This will make the material preview shading option use the correct colors from your textures instead of making them look washed out. Basically it takes away any filter Blender is using. The reason we're using the default model is because it has the UV maps and materials already set up for us. The outline model does not have any of these, as shown in its material properties tab. This section is going to double as a way to view your model in Blender the same as it would look in game. In the footage here, I'm going to turn my timeline into the shader editor. This is going to allow me to work on one screen more efficiently. Click on your default model, and head over to the Material Properties tab. Click on the very top material. For me, this is the body material in Asher, as shown in its text. On this model, they separated the body texture into four pieces, because they need different properties for each piece, like how gold needs to be shiny, but the skin needs to look flat. Once you've clicked on the material, look in your shader editor, and check the Use Nodes option. After this, two nodes should appear. Delete the principal node by pressing X on it, then add in an image texture and a mission node by pressing Shift-A to search for them. 
them. Next, connect the image texture to the emission node, and then the emission node to the material output. After that, open the image texture and import all the textures needed for the model that have underscore D in them. Once you've imported the textures, make sure the node is using the correct one. For me here, it's going to be the body texture, because we are in the body material. After this, select all of the nodes, copy them, and move to the next material. Mine here is another body material, which means I can just paste the nodes I copied without changing anything. I do this until I get to a material without the word body in it. This time, it's the jacket material. I know this is the coat texture for Asher, so I paste in the nodes, head over to the image texture node again, and change this to the coat texture. I repeat the same process for each material, and change the image texture accordingly for each one. After this, you can change your viewport to the material preview option to make sure that the models look correct. You can change this by holding Z on your keyboard and then pressing the material preview option. Alternatively, you can go up to the top right and press it up there. If the model looks correct and the same as it would in game, change your viewport to the solid preview. This option is the only one that allows us to see the vertex paint, so to do this, we go up to the top right and next to all the viewport shading options, press the drop down arrow. Select flat and then attribute. This should allow you to see the vertex paint on the model. Now we need to bake the vertex paint. Click on your model and head over to the render properties. Once again, make sure you're on cycles. After that, scroll down to bake and open that up. Change your bake type to emit and your output target to active color attribute. Once those have been selected, click on the bake option. After that, you should see that your model's vertex paint has changed. What I'm going to do next is most likely optional, but I just do this to make sure the vertex paint has no problems in copying. While selected on your model, head over to the material properties tab. Click on the material that has the words head underscore details in it. After you've done that, hover over your viewport and press tab. This should switch you into edit mode. At this point, your model will most likely have all of its vertices selected, which basically means it'll just be bright orange. Click in the void to deselect everything. Now head back over to the material properties tab and there should be three new options, assign, select, and deselect. While selected on the head details material, press select. This should select the eye, eyebrow, eye socket, and some pieces in the mouth. While hovering in the viewport, press X, and then press vertices. This should delete those things. I do this as an extra precautionary step to make sure the data transferring has no problems. Speaking of data transferring, that's our next step. Head over to the modifiers tab, which kind of looks like a wrench. Once you get here, you'll see the scale mesh modifier, but we can ignore this for now. What we do want to do though, is add a new modifier at the top. A little cheat that you can do here is just click on the add modifier text right there and then press D on your keyboard to add the data transfer modifier, which is the one that we want. After that, take the eyedropper from the source and select the model with the vertex paint on it. After that's been set, enable the face corner data option and then select the colors option along with it. Now what we're gonna do is overlay the models on top of each other. Before you do this though, you can do this additional step that I just do to make sure the colors are correct. For some reason, the Noasis model has a little bit of rotation on it. Take that rotation from the Noasis model and paste it onto the vertex painting model. Now to overlay the models, click on the bones for the vertex painting model. Set this model to be zero for all of its location values as the imported Noasis model should be at zero, zero, zero. Once they're completely overlaid onto each other, click on the Noasis model and press generate data layers. The vertex paint should now be copied onto the Noasis model, but we do have to apply it. You do this by heading over to the modifier tab and by the little camera symbol, there's that drop down arrow for the data transfer modifier. Click on that and then press apply. After that, click on the bones for the original vertex painted model and move it off to the side, just like we had before. Since we finished here with the recoloring, we can delete the old model, but keep the Noasis one that we just colored, obviously. I'd also advise everybody clicking on their model and going over to the material tab. There should be only one material assigned to the mesh, and that should be M underscore outline character, and nothing but that. If it is named any differently, then you do need to change it. Now that we have the vertex paint on the Noasis model, it's now time for the cleanup process. If your vertex paint looks fine to you, and there are no wrong colors, then you could skip this part as it is optional. For me though, I'm going to clean up a few faces that have the colors messed up. At this point, Enable the select face by vertex color add-on in your settings, as it'll help just a little bit here. First things first, is to select your model and enter edit mode by pressing tab. Once you're in edit mode, turn on the face select option, and then select the face that you want to fix. After this, you can optionally right click and press select by color. This uses the add-on, and truthfully, it could be a hit or miss sometimes, as it'll get a lot of the pieces you want sometimes, and other times it doesn't. I only use it here to start off my selection. You can change its threshold in the bottom left though, which will select more like faces the more up you go. After you selected the faces you want to fix, go up to the top left 
and switch into vertex paint mode. Enable the paint mask option, which will highlight all of those faces that you had selected in edit mode. At this point, I'd also suggest adding a keybind to the show overlays button, as it'll speed up this process a lot here. To start off with, I disable the overlays and click on my first color slot. After that, I click on the eyedropper. After you have the eyedropper tool, select the color on the model that you want all of the faces to be. For example, I select this bright red here. After you've selected that color, head up to paint and then click set vertex colors. This should set every face to your first color slot. If you want the faces to be a different color, just select the eyedropper tool again and repeat the same steps as before. Just keep repeating this same process until you're happy with your vertex paint. And remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just get the very obvious mistakes here with the vertex paint. I'd also like to say that the baked vertex paint is obviously using your modded textures as the base. So depending on how much optimization and cleanup you did on the textures themselves, the less mistakes there will be on the vertex paint when we baked it. Just something to keep in mind since cleaning up the textures is good for your skin itself and it will save you time on this cleanup for the vertex paint. And if you have all of that done, Go up to the top, press File, Export, FBX, and before actually exporting, go down on the right side of the Armature tab and turn off Add Leaf Bones. Make sure you do this every time with every outline model swap as it will cause problems if it is turned on. Once you've done that, you can go to Export and we can move over to Unreal Engine, finally. For starters, make sure you're in Unreal Engine 5.1 to match the game's version. Once you've done that, open up Unreal Engine, make a new blank project, and turn off Add Starter Content. After you've finally made it into Unreal Engine, we need to start replicating the file structure from the game files. Here I'm going to open up Fmodel, just to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Also make sure that you add in the Meshes folder, as we're putting the outline model there. Once you finally made it to the Textures folder, you can go ahead and drop your properly named images into the Textures folder. After you've dropped your textures in, move over to the Meshes folder and drop in your properly named FBX model. When you do drag it into Unreal Engine, there should be a big window that'll pop up. Do not press import all yet, and instead press the advanced options at the very top. Scroll down and then turn off create physics asset. After that you can press import all, and there's maybe this small window that'll pop up and you can close it. After that you should have three things that were imported. A material, a mesh, and a skeleton. The next thing we're going to do here is recreate the file path where the m underscore outline character material is located. This is going to start inside the Prometheus folder by making a new folder called commons next to the character folder. Then inside that one, we're going to make another called rendering, and another in that one called materials. Once you made the materials folder, open that one up, then go back to the meshes folder, and drag and drop that, that material into the materials folder. I stuttered there because it was so much material, material, material. Holy. After you've moved the material to the correct folder, delete the skeleton. Another window may pop up, but just press force delete at the bottom. Finally, we are done here with the folder structure part on my side, but you may have some goalie art for you, so make sure you do add that in or any VFX that you change. There is one more thing that we do have to do though. Go up to edit, then project settings, type in cook, and add a new array. Click on the three dots on the newly added array and set the location to the content folder. After that, cook like normal, and then head over to your cook folder. Once in here, the only thing that we need to do is delete the comments folder. This is going to delete every subfolder within the comments folder, which is completely fine and exactly what we want. After this, the process is the exact same as you would cook any other mod. Do all that jazz, open up your game, and voila! Your outline is done. Well, holy! That was a long yap session. Almost 14 minutes of yapping. That's insane. Well, with this video done, I really don't think I'll be making any more videos over this. I may consider one for model swapping, but it is very similar to this process. Well, moving on from that, if you do have any issues with this process, or you may have found something better, do let me know. The Discord to the modding server is in the description. There's a lot of nice people in there, so just poke your head around. I don't want to keep you any longer though, because this was a lot of information. If you wouldn't mind also subbing and liking the video, that would be very much appreciated. I did put a lot of time into this. That's the last thing I'm saying though. Peace out guys.